Denver Broncos Mile High View, no commercials, no bullshit. We're going to talk about some bullshit that seems to be circulating. And it's, it's, it's incredible to me, the ignorance um, that's, that's out there. The, I guess, like I said, if uh, you're in a bubble and you just say the same thing over and over, it somehow miraculously becomes the truth. Uh, especially in the Broncos country, there's certain chat elements going on, uh, a lot of disinformation, um, I guess, to make people give them a reason to hate a player or whatever. Uh, but before I just get into that, I, I also, um, I'm just I incredibly floored by just the stupidity I hear every day at you know, uh, getting into conversations with people, uh, and you're wondering why you're even getting into these conversations because they just make no sense whatsoever. Um, and it just, you know, this Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke thing, um, when somebody's in a conversation with you about, you remember I did a video and I got so much flack for it because I was the first to come out saying that these two guys are diametrically different. And it was like I, like I said something that couldn't possibly be true, but that's all that has come out of this. Everybody can see that this is these two quarterbacks are diametrically different types of quarterbacks, and it's just you know, it, it, I would think I would be embarrassed to say some of the things like that's it, that's not true, or something that's so obviously true. I mean, you, you, I don't know why you would embarrass yourself so much, but. These people really convince themselves of things that, you know, for some reason, I don't know why they, black is white, up is down, or whatever world that they come from. Um, and uh, one of the things that's I guess, is going around, and it's odd, is, uh, to me anyway, that Drew Locke demanded Shermer, and that's some sort of, they, they cater to Drew Locke's demands, where that's about as illogical as I've ever heard anything. I mean, I hear it, it's, it, it's like with the Denver Broncos, it just seems to be more and more and more and more spin, more just a clown show level garbage. Um, now, if you go back and listen to the uh, people that put out the spin, Sports Talk Radio out from Dub Valley and Dub Valley itself, the reason they wanted to go with Shermer, they want to stretch the field, stretch the field. We like to joke, you know, it's 90s football, go vertical, you know, Al Davis. That's all they talk about, stretch the field, stretch the field, stretch the field. And uh, that's why, you know, they brought in Flacco, because Flacco was, was going to run this West Coast system. They got rid of Flacco, they brought in Locke, and it's like, it was, they saw Kansas City, they talked about this, they, John Elway, Dove Valley, they wanted to run a Kansas City, it had nothing to do with Drew Locke, if Drew Locke can do it, fine, if he can't, no, we'll get somebody else, which they ended up doing in Teddy Bridgewater, and I said from the beginning, Bridgewater, the plan is to go with Bridgewater, Locke is through, that's what they do in, in Dove Valley, they, they just discard players. When they went at a whim because they see the Kansas City Chiefs, ah, there she blows, and that's what they want to do. That's what they said they wanted to do. Had nothing to do with Locke. And here you have people just spin doctoring um, the story about Locke demanding Shermer when they don't. It's like oil and vinegar, really, to be honest with you. So anyway, I spewed enough for a few minutes now you go ahead and tell me your experience with these people um my experience with these uh people is that uh they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to uh certain things around this organization um when i'm talking about babying players i'm talking about the likes of garrett bulls who you want to talk about somebody that was catered to with certain offensive line coaches and um, who was catered to to not get replaced, mind you, but to not blame things on himself. And there was a game last year, I think it was a year or two ago, under, under the tutelage of Joe Flacco. Uh, we all remember how that experiment went. 
um, where he got destroyed in the Bears game. Everybody was booing him. He couldn't put a, he couldn't put the responsibility on himself. Now, how does this relate to Drew Locke? I said coming out when that draft, I said that the reason why I was high on Locke is because of the system that he was going to under the Kyle Shanahan, Gary Kubiak type of offense, the West Coast zone run play action type offense, because that catered to Drew Locke's strengths. What did they do? And I've been trying to tell people this and people in the comments when I get into it with you guys, you guys can't seem to answer this question. You're going to tell me that they deliberately pulled the rug right under Drew Locke from Rich Gangarillo to Pat Shermer, who got fired in New York, who got fired in Cleveland, who got fired in Philadelphia. And, and, and you know what's funny? When uh, Andy Reid was in Kansas City, did uh, Andy Reid bring Pat Shermer in as his offense coordinator in any of the years that Pat Shermer was out there in the market before he got head coaching and offensive coordinator opportunities? No, he didn't. Okay? A lot of people can't seem to give me a straight, honest answer because they know it's bullshit. They know that they can't answer it correctly. But I'm not going to go in and attack anybody here. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to explain to a certain audience that can't get it through their brainwashed minds when it comes to the Denver Broncos organization and how shitty it's been since Pat Bowen's gone. How you're going to sit there and tell me we baby Drew Locke. How do we baby Drew Locke? Why? Because he got receivers. Oh, we got receivers. We got receivers. That's why we're going to go after and get to Sean Watson, right? We got receivers. We got receivers. That's why we're going to go get Aaron Rodgers, right? We got Jerry Duty and KJ Hamler because we're babying Drew Locke. No. Why did we draft two receivers in the first round? Because we're going vertical. We're going yes. vertical. Go ahead. No, I just said vertical. We're vertical. 90s football. Yep. It's 90s, 90s football. football. Give yep. me corners. Give me receivers. Yep. And who's the perfect 90s corner? <laughs> that is Patrick <laughs> Sertan. <laughs> Good Lord. And that, that, uh, that really cracked me up. That just totally cracked me up. You know, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. One of the dis most dishonest things I've, I've really, it, it just drives me crazy, is uh, there's a guy on Sports Talk Radio. It's basically his job to be, in my opinion, always a little bitch and spin and turn and twist things all over the place. And this, this guy is constantly, you know, you know hating, I don't know, I'll just say it, hating on Locke as part of his critique. He's obsessed in, in, in hating the guy. I mean, because I didn't want Drew Lock doesn't mean I'm hating the guy. I said, well, let's make it work. You know, at least I was honest about that. But when they drafted Drew Lock, um, the Denver Broncos, I'm sorry, don't gag there on your water. Uh, are you all right? Yeah. Uh, when uh, they drafted um, Drew Lock, the Denver Broncos, uh, uh, this idea was West Coast system. Because we had Flacco, and we're going to go run this Gary Kubiak, Shanahan-type system. So they get Locke to, to come in. That was the idea. Oh, don't, don't forget about Fant either. So they get Fant. They get, exactly, they get Fant, a tight end. We're, we're going tight end heavy. Then, then all of a sudden, things change. The narrative comes out. We want the Kansas City. Now, this is them. I'm not saying this. This is what these people are saying. The Valley saying it in Sports Talk Radio is cheering them on, cheering this on. If you go back in their archives, they're saying, we're going to go down. We're going to drive downfield. We're going to be like Kansas City. We're going to go vertical. We're going to go downfield. We're not, we're not going to do this West Coast thing anymore. This, this doesn't have anything to do with Locke. If Locke can do this, this, it can do this uh, three wide receiver set, now this is all an explanation why they got Shermer. This is what they're saying. If he can, he can. If we can't, we'll get somebody else. Now we got Bridgewater, okay? But before that, we're gonna. Would they told? They told Drew Lock to drive it downfield, drive it down, go vertical, go vertical. 
asking a young quarterback with a, a, a non-consistent and non-consistent offensive line, and don't give me the two point whatever seconds. That's debatable as to as an excuse for the offensive line. You know, that's just excuse making. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's we could have a conversation on how much time an offensive line is required to. You know, but that's not even that's not even the first step. The first step is. Can an offensive line form a pocket? Can an offensive line just be consistent? I mean, you have to get consistent play from an offensive line. Then you can talk about seconds. But with the Denver Broncos, which Orlando Franklin's already watching these OTAs and realizing that we're in trouble on the right end of the, the spectrum there. Big surprise there. I mean, like, I need him to tell me that. And he's wondering why this t- is taking so long and yeah, I've been saying that since, you know, uh, Peyton Manning was at the end of his rope there, at the end of his time. So the, the same people that want to say, oh, lock this, that, he threw, he was inconsistent and stuff. Yeah, you made him do stupid football. You brought in a guy that can't even utilize fan. And, you know, because you think, well, what about Kelsey? You know, it's the same. That's right. Kansas City, we got Shermer, and he uses Kelsey. He wouldn't even do that. You, this guy is so inept, right, as a offensive coordinator, he could not even use, utilize Fant when we all saw that. Everybody even outside of this channel was talking about that. But you wanted to be like Kansas City. But you got the poorest of the poor version of that system. Bringing that in and thinking, well, maybe if we get Bridgewater now, maybe if we get just could get Bridgewater. And what am I hearing now? I'm hearing promotion after promotion. It's going to be Teddy Ball, but they're just not calling it Teddy Ball. We're going to do a lot of running. We're going to do a lot of safe passing. Well, they have to because they know, and I guess quick throws. It's going to be dink and dunk. That's that's what you want. Before two the, seconds. Yeah, let yeah, just barely over two seconds because that's all you need. That's all the offensive line. Yeah, you know, you've got the, the geniuses who, who came up with that one. I would say it's probably more about three plus seconds. About three plus seconds. You can get, but you I, have to get because yeah, because you got the you got the forty yards, you got the thirty five, the twenty, and then plus you got people that are covered, and you're asking quarterbacks to go through progression. Well, if you want to do all that, uh, unless you're just doing like dink and dunk. Right. If you're doing dink and dunk. Yep. Maybe two seconds, two plus seconds for dink and dunk. Mm-hmm. Now my system wants to uh, do a job update. There we go. So um, I'm just through with this charade. Um, it's it's you know, let's just all agree that the idea was to put uh, their million dollar man Bridgewater in the driver's seat. And play conservative football. And who was the first person saying this? Well, I was one of the first person saying yeah, this. Yeah, Ian, you were the both first. And I said, literally, in one of our last videos, that they want to go conservative football on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and they're promoting that. They're that's promoting being, that. That's all being promoted. And, I, you know, I want to say, I want to talk about Teddy Bridgewater real quick, and I'll let you finish off with your point. Everybody says that Bridgewater doesn't throw interceptions. He had about the same interception ratio as Drew Locke last year. You want to talk about stats? He had the same amount of he almost had the same amount of interceptions that Drew Locke threw last year. So all you uh feel good Kool-Aid drinkers out there want to talk to me about how Drew Locke throws interceptions. Uh Bridgewater does the exact same thing. He did the exact same thing in Carolina last year. So that that's what I just wanted to touch on real quick. Well, that's perfect for for Elway because um, another quarterback they can bury. They can bury this. Yeah, the, the, I'm telling you, that's I'm, and I'll be the first to tell you the plan is to bury him. Matter of fact, even Sports Talk Radio is already hinting to that. That well, this he's not really long term. We'll just get let him have this season. I think Dove Valley has it in their head that they're going to get either Deshaun Watson or they're going to get Aaron Rodgers in their head. They won't. Oh, who? They won't. Well, I, 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 I now, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I know they won't. Um, I know Elway's desperate. You think? I, I know they think well, his, that's his, the solution. 
Yeah, yeah, but the delusion is is that they're gonna that Elway's gonna be here after next after this year. That's the delusion. He has one year left on his contract. After that, he's gone. So I don't think that he's gonna do it. I, by all means, you know, people can. I get it where people are coming from with this whole. He, there's no owner on this organization, so I can see Deshaun Watson coming here. I can see Rogers coming here, but I don't see it happening because they already got Bridgewater. They already got their veteran quarterback that they're paying money to. Okay, they could have waited. They could have had Locke and Driscoll still on this roster. They could have traded three round draft picks for Watson. They could have traded three round draft picks and a player, Bradley Chubb, for Aaron Rodgers. Okay, I'm just speaking hypothetically here. But you, you, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I said the Aaron Rodgers news was bullshit. I said the Deshaun Watson news was bullshit. I still, if we were still going to talk about this, I'd believe the Deshaun Watson rumors more than I would the Aaron Rodgers rumors if everybody wants an answer from me. But I'm not going to talk about quarterback, quarterback, quarterback 24-7. Quarterback, I'm talking quarterback, 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 quarterback. Because we, have, because we have receivers. We have receivers. We have receivers. Like, like, give me a freaking break. These these receivers we have on this team, one of them pouts because, oh, and, and everybody wants to talk about Jerry freaking duty. He's doing so good in OTAs because they're running in shorts. He's doing so good in a, a mandatory minicamp because they're running in shorts. And and once that guy gets on the field and gets hit in the middle of the field, he's going to go back into the shell, and he's going to be the Jerry Judy that I, I, I knew coming out of college. He's a soft player with an immature mindset where you could have got a Tristan Wirfs where you could have got a different other receiver. If you wanted to go there, if you wanted to, you could have got a Justin Jefferson. You could have got a CD Lamb. You could, you know, all these other receivers. You know, you couldn't get Henry Ruggs because he got drafted before us. But, you know, you could have got all the – a Clay Chaypool, uh, Chase Claypool, who I was high on in the draft. You could have got all these other players. But, no, you had to get the, the certified G in Jerry Duty, who you pass up on Tristan Ruffs, who already has a Super Bowl ring. So – well, that, that was an Elway pick, you know, all the way. Oh, no, how dare you? Oh, the same people that are delusional about Drew Locke and, and Shermer will, you know, will never. I mean, yeah, that's, what, that's, why, that's why Locke did a lot better in the uh, Rich Gangarello West Coast zone running uh, offense than he did with the three wide receiver sets, uh, 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 the single back uh, formations in a. And uh, with Shermer, who's a souped-up version of Mike McCoy, you well, want to talk about poor man? Everybody likes to talk about poor man's version of Kansas City. It's a poor, it's a, it's a souped-up version of Mike McCoy. Well, the whole reason they drafted Locke was because of that West Coast system. That because was the that's idea. He, that's where he thrived under, and and that's that's what I've been trying to tell all the commenters out there. You, you, oh wow, we're gonna go get Shermer, who was you go on all these other message boards where you were the first person to bring it up, where they are happy to get rid of Shermer because he has no clue how to scheme. He has no clue how to scheme receivers open, but it had to take Mike Munchek and his offense. Oh, you see where that's coming, where they had to pull the guard. They listened to me, where they were trying to get the running game going. Look what happened. And, and, and it's funny, you know, when Drew Locke was starting to do those play-action type plays, he, what did he do? He felt more comfortable because it opened up the field. Well, Every time... The initial the initial problem was uh, goes all the way back to Manning uh, at the end of his time. Oh, Pat's uh, the Remember him? Well, this is something Orlando Franklin brought up, and not us. Orlando Franklin brought this up. The former uh, uh, lineman. He said that uh, he can't understand what is taking the Broncos so long to get serious with their offensive line. Oh, God. Now, had the Broncos had any kind of Okay, we got to start revamping this, or going to get in this. We have to start developing our line. If they would have had that mindset and, and thought about, we really got to build our lines. So you, you could bring in Joe Flacco, or you could have brought in uh, Case Keenum. Bridgewater. Bridgewater, too. Well, Bri well let's, I'm, I don't want to, this just predates the Bridgewater. What I'm saying is, is that you could have brought, Fl let's say you brought Flacco in, just whatever. And then, because that was the time you drafted Locke. Flacco probably could have been sustainable with a, with a healthy, decent, consistent offensive line. Could have been sustainable that you could have then brought Locke into. And forget all this, Kansas City. I see the Chiefs. Bring in Shermer because I want a three. If you just could just not be that kind of, that kind of GM. You could somehow not be that guy. 
and stuck with a plan. First, the offensive line. You got you, then, you, you know, in the meantime, build up your receivership, right? Your receivers, receivers, receivers. Um, and tight ends, because you needed to do that too. You at least, I think, would have been on your way to being a playoff contending team. Plus, you, but then uh, you got the defensive line you'd have to worry about, linebacking you got to worry about. Yeah, they still would have ignored that. Yes. So, but I'm just saying from the offensive standpoint, you couldn't even get the offensive line nailed down so you could bring in Flacco. So then you could develop one. They can't develop anybody on this team. Who did they develop? Uh, the baby Garrett Bowles. Yes, who had to be baby. If you want to yeah. talk about the yeah, You want to talk about going through your offensive line coaches. Why was that? Because of Garrett Bowles. Because Elway was, he was so enamored and tickled pink by Garrett Bowles that he didn't want to get that pick wrong like he did Paxton Lynch. Oh, remember him? Talk about another ba- another baby player who was crying on the sideline when he tweaked his ankle. Oh. Um, but uh, you, you want to talk about, uh, you know, I, I have, you know, a lot of people, this is another problem. Everybody was, oh, if we had this on the offense, we're going to, no, okay, Elway can't help himself. Elway cannot help himself to stick with the system. Okay, at least the highlight reel guy got that right. We have no we have no identity on this offense. I know what identity we have on the defense because I know what Vic Fangio is all about. But he 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 doesn't have the freedom to pick his own players. Uh shocker. What a shocker. You know, he could have got Devin Bush in that draft, but you know, screw Devin well, Bush. He's... That that's why I had my last video. I wanted to explain the Chicago Bear the difference. There's a complete difference in player personnel that that Fangio was bringing in. Under, he could have had, mm-hmm. you know, with the Chicago Bears as opposed to what he's able to to bring in here with the Denver Broncos. And there's so many needs in the Denver Broncos. It's so it's, it's a, so it's dilapidated. A, it's, it's t- yeah, it's laughable. It's laughable. You you know, could you imagine having a linebacking core like Devin Bush and Zayvon Collins? There you oh go. My, yeah, yeah, my God. Could, could, yeah, that, that's what you could have done. Everybody that's in the media in Denver, that concept, it's so above their pay grade. It's so above their pay grade. We tried. Could you imagine having a Jordan Phillips or Sheldon Rankins, both of them? Yeah. And you had Bradley Chubb and Vaughn Miller. There's your front seven. Yeah. No, There's they can't, front yeah, seven. So far above their pay grade. That's so far above their pay grade. They can't. It's not just STR. It's feel good fans because they're, <laughs> yeah, orange and blue. Yeah. Well, corner, 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 receiver, receiver, receiver. Yeah, a corner, 90s corner. Is, yep, a 90s corner is the per- the perfect example of that is a. Um, certain. 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 He's your quint- quintessential 90s corner. <laughs> Lacks the flip. The hip fluidity of today's NFL yeah, corner. The stiff, the makeup speed. Oh, God, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and if you listen to, and again, it's again, uh, Elway fawning, you know. You think that was the best pick? I mean, like, my God, they just got Deion Sanders. They, they're almost got there. Champ Bailey. Yeah. yeah they said that too, yeah. Can I tell you this? Was Champ Bailey stiff? No. He was the, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer for a reason. So what, what do you think they're what do you think they're going to see with Sertain in the uh, in the NFL arena? Is it going to be like Judy, or no? I think that Sertain is a little bit more mature than Judy, in my opinion. But I think what you're going to see from Judy or Rick, what you're going to see from Sertain is a guy that's like Kareem Jackson, who my comp coming out. If everybody wants to talk about comps, he's a Drake Kirkpatrick and a taller version of Kareem Jackson who are very stiff players who get beat over the top and don't have the requisite makeup speed to hold on the guys. Because you remember, they're trying to put him in the slot, which I've been saying he's a boundary corner. Just wait. People will find out what, what this guy's all about when he gets beat by Tyree Kill, Keenan Allen, and Henry Ruggs in the division. You'll find yeah. out. Um, um, uh, Vic Fangio is very <laughs> definitely not convinced uh... – no, because he, he's a hell. Yeah, he knows it's bullshit. Yeah, he's not going to make it as a slot. Yes. That's where they need him. You know, we okay. brought that up. He, no, 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 no. We don't. No, we do not. No, we do not need him in the slot. We have Bryce Callahan, who's one hell of a slot corner when healthy. And I see where you're going with it. Yeah, when healthy. When healthy. 
you have Ronald Darby and Kyle Kyle Fuller, who, like you said, could have brought Ronald Darby in for a lot cheaper last year, but we've already went into that. I tried. I tried. I tried so hard. I tried. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. And now it's like the best decision ever, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and then they'll probably get blamed because they'll be – they have no safety support. You know, we, that's what I showed, too, with the Bears. You know, the difference of safety support versus when your safety is a, a sign-on. You don't get the guys you're talking about, you know. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't. I'm, I'm just – I'm a Nebraska Chief fan. So. Nebraska, yeah, you're a Nebraska Chief fan with your – with your – with yeah, your – you know, that's a poodle. Yeah, that's a poodle. That, you see that? That's the definition of a cop out right there. The definition of it. Yeah, with a um, with, with a, my with my seven. Sorry, I, I have that fake canine hat. I just got to put my Seven Eleven hat on right there. Yeah. Yeah, they just my my Crown Vic. I would have been putting it in the background there, but it was hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your '90s Crown Vic. Uh, yeah. Former police car. Yeah. <laughs> And you stenciled K9. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I stenciled it. Uh, so, yeah, so that, yes. Yeah, so, anyway, I just, uh, you just, I don't know. I, I don't know where to go with all this. It's just. Yeah, I'll wait so, till training camp. I know. We, yeah, it's just, yeah. So, the, the bottom line is what's going to happen, and I've been saying this, you've been saying this, is that, uh, they do not want anybody to see Locke with the first team. Yep. So eventually, and probably sooner rather than later, Bridgewater will be taking over the first unit. Um, and we're going to get Teddy Ball. Woo! You ready for a conservative offense this year? Yeah. Cause, and now, well, now that's the thing. That's the thing. Remember Cecil Lammy, the, the guy that just cheerleads every decision coming out of Dove Valley. You know, God bless him. <laughs> we're going downfield. We're going to stretch the field. We're going vertical, right? Yeah. About face march. Well, let's go conservative. Let's run let's the ball. Let's run the football. Yep. Let's dink and dunk. Let's God. all safe passes. You ready to <laughs> score 17 points a game again? Ready for that? You're going to need that two seconds because we can't let that play go in any longer because – any longer, you could probably get Bridgewater injured, and you'd have to see Drew Lock. Drew Lock, which you probably will end up seeing him before all this is over with, anyway. Yeah, because so, how 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 many quarterbacks this offensive line's gotten hurt? I wouldn't be shocked by if it's by week three. But I'm telling you, Colby, I'm telling you that the narrative is going to be: we got to get, we have to. There's just no doubt. Now it has to be Aaron Rodgers. Now it has to be Deshaun Watson. It has to be. No. Good lord. I don't want to segue that into one last thing. We don't we should talk about special teams. <laughs> That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant in Denver. Yeah, they don't exist, right? Yeah. Special team, it's 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 Drew Locke's fault that they're we, 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 we drafted two safeties in the fourth and fifth round for a reason. To play special teams. We brought in Mike Boone to play special teams. Okay, so we don't develop players that can play special teams. That, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. If, look at all the decent, all the good teams out there who develop players. They're in the playoffs. They, they, they know how to develop players within their system. They have all have good special teams. Those that can develop players have from the draft, and they become good players, great players even, they have good special. They don't have special teams problems. They have a guy that knows how to run special teams, but he doesn't have the player personnel. Well, I agree with you. You know, that's why those later round picks matter, too. It's not just those first three, four rounds. It's those fifth, sixth, seventh rounds undrafted free agents that matter, too, that I look at more than the first and second round. First and second round is your, <laughs> yeah, Patrick Sertain, Javante Williams, but, you know, your Jonathan Coopers, your Kerry Vincents, your Josh Smith. Rod Smiths, your Ed McCaffrey's, your uh, Kayvon Webster's, remember him? Your Cody Latimer's, oh, remember him too, yeah. 
So uh, your Omar Bolden, oh, we remember him too? So, you know, those type of players are guys that make an impact on your team. Well, if we develop a player, we got to get rid of him. That's rule number one. And yeah, we, we have to get rid of Jano. We got to get rid of Phil Lindsay. We got to get rid of Wesley Woodyard. We got to get rid of Joe Mays. We got to get rid of, uh, what's his face, Malik Jackson. We got to get rid of, uh, uh, Paradis. yep. Paradis, too. He's got to go. He's going to get rid of him. Yeah, it just, uh, it just. This you know, team's a joke. It is. They're, the, they're the 90s Raiders. They're the 90s Raiders in this century's Cleveland Browns. Just go vertical. You want a, you want a 90s corner? Here's Patrick Sertain for you. Al Davis approved. Yeah. <laughs> great. Stamp of approval. <laughs> From the yeah. 1990s. For you. Passed up on Rashawn Slater, Zayvon Collins. Uh, Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. We baby Drew Locke. It babied him right out of town. Yep. We. <laughs> <laughs> well, his 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 tombstone's already in the back of uh, Elway's backyard. So oh, yeah, they've car they're carved it up already. Yeah, they they're, carved already it. Car, they're already carving up. Teddy ball. Yeah, get Teddy Bridgewater. Come on. The, the, what is it? The, the caretaker? The, 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 the Yep. Yep. Carve that right in that tombstone right there. Another quarterback. If We're you gonna... need protection, my poodle and I will help out. Yeah. Kick out the. <laughs> but only if the poodle has his fake uh, shepherd head on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Fake shepherd head. Now, yep. yeah. So, uh, you know what I think would be funny yeah, this fake shepherd that's a fake dog right there <laughs> everything you do is fake i'm ruining it stop <laughs> he said i'm not fake yeah uh, but what i was gonna say is that um i think it would be funny and tragic all at the same time if aaron Rodgers came here and they ruined him too <laughs> that'd be the crown achievement for the cemetery <laughs> We ruined the Hall of Famer. We ruined the Hall of Famer. I mean, they already did, they did that with Manning at the end of his career. Oh, basically, that's true. I guess that we'd have two. I guess two that we they already ruined. have Peyton's 2015 tombstone on there. So I don't think he. Could, yeah, I think he knew. We're gonna put him in the. We're gonna put him in the Gary Kubiak offense where he doesn't succeed whatsoever. Good God. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, I know. We're beside ourselves because, you know, we have our glasses on, our, the they live glasses. We can actually see. We're, we've got one that can see. We've got two of them here that can see. We hate them. <laughs> Boop, pop, and then she pops and goes away. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Gotta and, love it. Hey, I did watch Hot Tub Time Machine again uh, oh, last night. Do you oh, think yeah. Ron James and Bobby Massey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were in there. <laughs> they went to the 1990s, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Back where receivers were the hot item, the corners were the hot item, and, you know, just, just being soft in the middle. Is just a... being soft in the middle. You know, don't worry about it. Yep. Hey, hey, at least Al Davis will be remembered for something, leaving the blueprint on how to – not be a recu recu NFL franchise. Yeah, exactly. And how to meddle. Not to, and how not to build an NFL team. Just keep meddling. Keep meddling. Keep meddling. Just keep meddling. Just keep meddling. Yeah. Just keep meddling. Just keep meddling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So we got an interview coming up. Uh, we got a Minnesota Viking fan uh, uh, said that. Uh, the big surprise was that you had you had the interview. Yeah, okay. That uh, Go ahead. Uh, Peyton uh, George Peyton it was a yes man for the GM, but I thought that wasn't a surprise to me because he was an assistant, so that kind of went with the job. Uh, we are going to get the Minnesota Vikings fan take on how they handled Case Keenum. How yes, and how the Broncos seem to just go through quarterbacks like socks. It can't be. The organization, right? It has yeah, to be. And, and, and we talked about, you know, this will this will happen. Hopefully, here's this will happen here soon, probably in the next week, 
where I I asked I've at, I asked this guy, hey, what what's with Elway and Bolin? Is there a distinct difference on how this team's been? He's like, yeah. It, he didn't even sugarcoat it. It was oh, don't well, even laugh. Yeah, he laughed. Yeah, like, he laughed. That's yeah, like, how laughed. that's how everybody views us. This is from a Vikings fan. And I have I have friends from different teams, and when it comes to Elway, they know. He's he's totally screwed this team over, and that's why we got Peyton because you can't say Elway now. It's all Peyton. Don't say Sports yep. Talk it's Radio. Elway Elway. Layer. Yes, Mr. Elway. Yes, I, yes, you are the director of player personnel. Yes, Mr. Elway. Yes, and GM and, and GM slash GM and Both head GM, coach. Yeah, and and head coach. Yes, Mr. Elway. Yes, Mr. Offensive Elway. coordinator. Yep. Yes, Mr. Elway. Special teams coordinator. Yes, Mr. Elway. Yes, Mr. We'll draft. We will draft you special teams players. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about the, development. Just, uh, don't, oh, he, he's not just he's just not he's not just off scoring. He's a draft picker and evaluator. It's all him. Yeah, don't go go don't go into player development because we'll have to get rid of them after we develop them. They'll have to go. Yep. Bye Jano. Bye Phil Lindsay. Bye Malik Jackson. Bye Danny Trevathan. Just to name a few. Yeah. Jack Barrett. Yeah. Oh yeah. Remember him? He has a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. And he just got paid. <laughs> God, well, what we don't need him. It. I remember sports talk right now. Yeah, we don't need him. Yeah, yeah, we don't need him. He, he's yeah, he's just like Shane Ray. Get yeah. out of here. Oh, my God. Uh, they listen to these guys. They just keep could, listening. Could you, imagine, could you imagine having Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, Shaquille Barrett, and if Von Miller leaves, you still have Shaquille Barrett and Bradley Chubb? That's how you build a team, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no development here. So yeah, no development zone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where's 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 the tombstone? Right over here. Yeah. Well, no, they got a pink slip. They didn't get a tomb. The quarterbacks <laughs> get a tombstone, but yep. Bye, Shaq. Bye, Malik. Bye. Yeah, they, yeah, they get the pink okay. slip. Yeah. <laughs> they get a pink slip. Yep. And thrive and thrive somewhere else and go somewhere else. You go somewhere else and thrive. We're getting rid of you. <laughs> God. I know. I know. It's too much. It it's is. I don't have any Aaron Rodgers Kool Aid for you, though. <laughs> honk, 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 honk. Oh, big hair, big floppy shoes. Kool Aid. I don't have any of that for you. That's not going to help this organization out. Sorry. It's not going to help it out. No. Probably could get him a tombstone, maybe. God. All right. Anything else, or we want to wrap this one and make it a short one? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so go ahead. We'll I'll post that interview once it's finished. And uh, you know, since the Vikings are our first opponent, I think that's kind of a fitting thing. Yep. Uh, it's going to be in, that's going to be interesting too. Uh, I think an interesting game. I think that's why it'll you know it was bad. It'll be the same old, same old shit. Do we play the the Broncos play the Bears? I don't think so. I don't think so either, either. I think, yes, I think this game was uh, kind of one of these games they wanted to, oh, the, the storylines, you know, here's the yes. storylines. Teddy yeah. Bridgewater, it was almost set up, wasn't it? Teddy Bridgewater, Shermer, uh, George Payton, this uh, Minnesota connection. Well, we've got to throw Minnesota in on that. Uh, what, do we play Green Bay? No, we play the, I think they play the Lions, though, don't they? I think so. Yeah, we we play a we gotta play a bottom feeder because we're yeah a yeah feeder. yep we gotta we gotta be good at good at, try to be good at something at least I'll be a close game <laughs> maybe maybe not who knows no 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 I don't know Ugh, it's God. hard to tell it's hard to tell anything anymore nope all right well I'll let you go all right take care all right, bye all right bye.